what I'm about to show you is going to blow your mind. Check this out. Present day electronic brains are complete morons, but this will not be true in another generation. They will start to think and eventually they will completely outthink their makers. That was Arthur C. Clarke back in 1964, predicting the future, which actually came true. It's pretty crazy to think just how far we have come with technology in such a short amount of time, and it's continuing to speed up. That's why in today's video, we are going to be covering skills that you need in order to stay ahead when it comes to your career, being in demand, and what are these skills? What are these areas of focus that will continue to grow in the future? There is so much out there to learn that you want to ensure what you are learning are things that will actually be valuable in the future. The first one is cloud computing. Hmm, what a lovely day. Look at those clouds. No, not that kind of cloud computing. Cloud computing is rapidly growing in IT. Actually, Gartner reported back in April of 2022 that estimating a global end user spending on public cloud services by 2023 now will reach 600 billion. There's no shortage as you think of all the places that you use the cloud when it comes to storage. And I mean, we are continuing to buy more and more storage on the cloud as we continue to use more digital products. I often think about this, when will it end? Like when I am 80 years old, how much will I be spending on storage in the cloud for my photos from when I was 20? Will I still care? I feel like there's an attachment and I will. And I'll actually pull up on screen here, the average cloud computing career salaries. And there are so many different careers within cloud, which is pretty exciting if you think about it. So the highest paying is cloud architect, coming in at 138,000 US. Then cloud data science, cloud consultant, cloud engineer, etc. But what exactly is cloud computing in simple terms? I mean, if you are considering getting into cloud computing from a technical or even non-technical standpoint, let's break it down in a very simple way so you actually understand what it is because we talk a lot about these terms, whether it be cloud computing, data science, security, but what exactly are we talking about? When you think cloud computing, think of it as the on-demand availability of your computer system resources. When you go to access your Google Cloud Storage, when you go to access Dropbox, they are all stored on the cloud. And there are four main types of clouds, whether it be private clouds, public clouds, hybrid clouds, or multi-clouds. Also too, I want to share with you some courses if you are looking to get into cloud computing, starting with the basics. So let's put them up on screen here. Okay, here's a fact that might just blow your mind. Back in 2021, organizations around the world spent around 150 billion on cyber security not million, billion. That's kind of, that for me, that's almost too much to fully comprehend. That's a lot of money. And actually a survey of 4,000 mid-sized companies suggests that threat volumes will almost double from 2021 to 2022 and then 2023 where we are now. So cybersecurity is continuing to be an area that is so in demand and it's only going to continue to grow in that direction. But what exactly is security? What is cybersecurity? Okay, sounds kind of obvious of course, the point of cybersecurity is to protect the business or application or software from potential hackers or even other failures or bugs going on in the system. System. Within that, there are so many different roles. One of uh, my friends actually started out as a developer and then got interested in cybersecurity and started reverse engineering applications. So what you are doing, this is one of the coolest roles out there in my opinion, is you're actually hacking into the, own, the business's system to find vulnerabilities. So it's called reverse engineering and it essentially is you are thinking or putting on this hat like you are a hacker and finding potential vulnerabilities in the business's system. So it's a super interesting job and there's so much to do with cybersecurity from a technical standpoint or non-technical standpoint. Here are some courses though that if you're interested in exploring more about it that you should check out. Next up is data scientist and data analyst. And these are two very separate roles, but I included them both in number three for the reason of data as a whole is the oil of now. Is that what the saying is? Data is the oil? I feel like that saying has been said too much, but you get what I'm saying. 
As more and more companies continue to go online and expand their digital presence, being able to really understand data, read data, gather data is becoming more and more important, not just for data scientists or analysts, but at the end of the day, for really anyone who is customer facing, whether you're a business analyst, whether you are customer support, being able to easily gather or gain access to this data has become increasingly important. I know for myself in past jobs I've worked at, I, the customer success teams or individual who are working client facing, they were required to actually have the ability to know SQL. And this is because oftentimes they'd be pulling in data that they were querying based on what was coming in from the customers. Now, this might vary based on size of company or specific role, but at the end of the day, even if you are a non-technical person or in a non-technical role, having the ability to really understand data and have access to it through using things such as SQL is becoming increasingly important. Also too, SQL is really fun to learn and I highly suggest it. But what exactly is the difference between a data scientist and a data analyst? It's, as I mentioned earlier, there's a big difference in these roles. Let's start with data scientists. A data scientist is essentially a concept that's used to tackle big data. It includes data cleansing, preparation, and also to some analysis. I'm gonna put up on screen here kind of the main areas around data science. Here are some skills though that are required to become a data scientist. Strong knowledge of Python. Of course, you need to be well-versed in SQL or SQL, and also to understanding of multiple multiple analytical functions and knowledge of machine learning. I have met so many data scientists throughout my time in tech that are self-taught. So this is definitely an area if you're interested in that you don't need to go back to formal school in order to become one. I'll list some courses here for you. Now, what exactly would be a data analyst then? Well, a data analyst should be able to take specific questions or topics, discuss what the data looks like, essentially you're analyzing the data, and represent that data to a relevant stakeholder. So a lot of time, data analysts actually interact a lot with stakeholders, or in some cases, even with clients, whether they are explaining what the data means, why it looks like this, and what they can do with this data. I feel like I said data a lot in that sentence. So what skills are required to become a data analyst? Well, for one, you need to be pretty well-versed in math, especially in statistics. Other areas you need to be well-versed in include an understanding of R or Python, data wrangling, and many other skills. Also too, here are some courses for data analytics. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video going through some of the top areas, top skill sets that will be required and in demand really across so many jobs in the tech industry. And when I say tech industry, I always feel funny saying that because tech touches every industry and so do these roles. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content around coding, career, future tech, you know, all of that fun stuff. And leave in the comments other video topics you want me to cover. All right, see you soon.